right, YouTube, in this edition of uh, our Wraith project, this is part one. We're going to show you guys how to uh, take apart, clean, grease, um, basically rebuild your axial Wraith transmission. This will apply to SEX10 transmissions as well. The only difference is the back case. But we're going to go ahead and start. I'll show you guys what you need. Um, first thing I use is a little container of oil. Uh, you're going to need your tool kit any kind of work but basically you just wanted to have your basic um, hexes and whatnot in it a pair of needle nose pliers to get to the back bolts or you can use the hexes um, or the uh, socket that's in your toolkit you're gonna need your favorite um, grease this is uh, I think this is pun intended lube tube um, you're gonna need your favorite grease for greasing the uh, gears inside your transmission and a transmission and we've got actually we had a 27 turn motor on there I'm gonna be doing um, just a brush setup for now I'm gonna run the axial AE2 uh, speed controller instead of doing this one I picked up just a cheapo HPI and I say cheapo is in, inexpensive it's not a bad motor Saturn uh, 35 turn so we're gonna do that instead of the 27 turn give us a little more torque because the Wraith is going to be a lot heavier than the SCX-10, so I'd rather have the torque than the wheel speed. We're going to start by taking the slipper assembly off. And what I'll do is I hold tightly on the gear here. We're just going to take a pair of pliers or a socket to it. You probably got better tools than this, but I work with what I got. No need to buy a fancy tool to take a nut off. So once that's off, you're going to have a spring that you'll remove and a washer and the washer I usually pull off with the spurger. There's no need to take these three bolts off you can actually slip the entire assembly off and if you hold the washer here here's your slipper pad on the back of it so set that aside spring nut and now this piece right here the back side of the slipper you can just pinch let's see I don't know if it'll focus ah. get a pair of pliers underneath here and just pry it a little bit it'll pop off there's nothing holding it on it just sometimes get a little gets a little stuck I've never actually had this much trouble getting one off which is pretty funny there we go it just slips off just like that and it's got a little pin that'll hold it so take your pliers and get in there and grab that pin all right so you got that now your transmission is down to this point so we're gonna take our two and a half millimeter and come on the back side here and we'll loosen these three bolts here. Do this a little better so you guys can see it here. Once we get these three bolts unscrewed just a little bit here, the motor plate will come off. This piece right here. Take that set it aside. And then this piece will slip right off. And now you can pull the three bolts out. So now we're down to this. So now we will take, there's one more bolt holding in right here, and that's a two millimeter, not a two and a half. So we'll swap heads here. Go ahead and take that off. Now the front half of the transmission, you'll be able to slide it apart. So just wiggle it a little bit, and the cases will separate. Hold that gear down in there so it doesn't fall. And now you have your front half of your transmission apart. Now you can get to the internal gears. And what we're going to do, we're going to take these bearings out first. I like to soak the bearings in oil. Let's see here, we can pry them out usually with this end of your pliers here. They're kind of pressed in there pretty good. If you set it down on the table, you can usually just tap down on it a little bit. Just a little bit of force and you got your two bearings and there as you can see they're pretty gunked up these bearings are going to get worn over time when you go through water any kind of muddy surface so what we'll do first we'll take a towel here and just wipe them to get any of the crap off of them get them some sort of clean all right there we go and now we'll drop it in the oil it's a little thick, uh, it's the only oil I had laying around, but oil's oil and it's not going to hurt it. 
what it's going to do, it's going to seep into the inside of the bearing and lubricate the actual ball bearings inside of there because those things are going to get rusty after a while. This one is it's still good. So they're going to get rusty after a while when you drive off road and go through the dirt and the water and whatnot. So let those soak. We'll let them soak the entire time we're cleaning this transmission case. So now we can take out this top shaft here. Now this looks pretty good. It doesn't look dirty. It doesn't look like it has any grime on it. So we're going to leave this all assembled. We'll just set it off to the side. And then I actually have the metal upper or the, the idler gear, the Robinson Racing idler gear. So we'll take that off and we'll take those two bearings. Those are pretty clean, but we'll go ahead and soak them anyway. Just push that bearing out. Let all the bearings soak the whole time we're cleaning this. Now we can take the back half here. And there's no bearings on this, so we can leave this all assembled. But there are some bearings in the case, on the back half of the case. So what we'll do to get to this larger bearing, you can just, you can just pull up on it right here. It'll pop out. Actually, to not mar that up, we'll go from the back side. So we'll take off these other two millimeters. My dog whining in the hallway wanting to come in here. Alright, so now we can pop this back half off. There's another bearing in here. So we'll push down on it. There's that bearing. And then this one will do the same thing. Just a little bit of push. And a little bit there. So now we got that bearing out. So all the bearings are out of the transmission case now. And just clean the dirt off and throw them in the oil. Good to go. All right, now we can begin uh, cleaning the actual plastic pieces to the case. We mixed up a little solution here, just some soapy water, got a toothbrush. I like to use this to scrub down the plastic parts, as you can see. They get pretty gunked up with just crap and crud from uh, running the trail. So we'll just take them down, scrub them real good, try to get all the dirt off of it. Alright, so now we can let all those parts soak for a little bit just to clean a little better and then we're going to rinse them off. And we got our bearings still back here as you can see in the oil soaking in the background. Let those get pretty clean. Agitate them just a little bit. We'll flip them around here. See if we can't just stir them up. I don't know what it's going to do but it sounds good. Every time you ever want to clean something you mix it. All right, some thick oil. <laughs> I think this is actually 2050, so it's pretty thick oil, high mileage. Some of these transmissions get high mileage on them, they need high mileage oil. So now we'll go ahead and take a look at our gears and we'll inspect them here. Everything looks good. Just clean some of the surface. Take a dry rag and if you just wipe it, it'll pull the excess grease off. You just wanna get it clean. All right, there's that one. Now we'll take a look at this one. This one looks pretty good. I don't even need to. It's not bad. Pin's good. And then our idler gear is brand new, so we don't have to do anything to that. Slipper, we want to keep that dry. We can go ahead and clean the motor plate while we're here. It's not that bad, but it never hurts, right? Scrub that down a little bit. And drop it in the water. Let it soak. So now that we've got our axial transmission soup, we're going to let this soak for a little bit and come back and start reassembly. We've got all the transmission pieces dried and rinsed, so now it's time to start reassembling. Uh, one thing, be careful, this little pin here, if you still have this motor plate, uh, some of you guys run it, this little pin goes right inside of here. That thing came out on me while I was washing it, so just be careful and remember that, because if you go to put it together without it, 
you're going to have some slop in your drivetrain. So what we're going to do first, we're going to go ahead and reinstall all the bearings. And what we'll do, we'll just start pulling them out of the oil. I don't want to take too much of the oil off. So what we'll do is we'll just dab it on a washcloth, get some of the surface oil off of it, and we'll go ahead and slip it back in here. All of our gears have bearings. Now we can start lubing up the actual gears. And what I like to do is not just put a dab on there. I like to actually go in and what I'll do is I'll start here and just put a little bit, I'll squeeze just a little bit just to get it out on the gears. I don't think there's really too much. I don't think there's a point where it's too much. But I can tell you some people do put a lot of lube or a lot of grease in their transmission. I mean, to the point where it's just like sticky. Something like that works pretty good. Just coat the gears real nice. We can go ahead and put this, let's put it in this way. Go ahead and pop it back in here. Just like that. We'll stand that up. Now we'll take our idler gear, and this actually, this shaft right here goes on your idler gear, so don't lose that. Slides right in there. You can use that. We'll just dab it on here. This stuff is really good. All right. Take our fingers and just spread the grease around a little bit. You really want to make sure it's evenly spread and all the way in the teeth of the gear. We'll just drop that down on there. So now we've got those two gears. Top gear, once again, real simple. Dab it on. All right. So now we'll push that in. We've got all our gears together. And I don't want to turn this yet. Most people right here, they'll start spinning it and try to spread the grease around. I want to get it. I want to get the case on first, and then test spin it. That way, all the grease stays inside of the case. Because when you spin this, it's going to push the grease out of the cracks. So I'll go ahead and take the case, and we'll just slide it on here. And it'll snap. And now that it's held together, now we can do some test spin. I'll just spin it a couple times. And there you go. So, once that's done, we're going to reassemble the back part here. We'll take this and slide it on. There we go, just like that. we got two, two millimeter bolts that we'll put on here. Tighten those down. That's going to be the back half of your output on the race. Transmission, on the SCX-10 transmission, this won't be here. It'll just be... The back half of the case will look very similar to the front half of the case. The SEX 10 transmission is basically just these two parts here. It doesn't actually have this. This is a lockout. Um, the Wraith transmission, they have a dig case that goes on this that looks very similar. You mount your servo on it and whatnot, but that's another video. Same concept applies, though. Um, you'll put the two cases together, and then you'll go ahead and reattach the bolts. On the Wraith, this one right here goes in... The SCX-10, one of the big differences, you'll see the bolt here, the extra bolt on the Wraith transmission is right here. On the SCX-10 transmission, it's further out to the corner over here. So that's one of the main ways to tell, especially if you're just looking at the front case, because they do look so similar. That's a good indicator of which um, transmission the case is for. The SCX-10 transmission, and I think I have one. Let me see if I have one real quick. So you can see here, if you look, just a tad bit of difference. You can see the SEX-10, that top corner bolt is in line with that, um, let's use a pointer here. It's in line with that brace right there, and you have the bolt. And then you look at the Wraith transmission, you have that same brace, but the bolt's inside further. 
So that's a good way to tell which transmission you're working with. So we got those. Now we're going to go ahead, put these back on, and slide them on. Three bolts here that hold the uh, motor plate on. Now we're going to go ahead and put our motor plate back on. Don't forget to slip this little bushing in here. It's just going to slip in right there and it kind of just holds itself in. And now we'll go ahead and slide the plate on. Just like that. And it's probably going to push that little pin out. Just make sure and slide it back down. There you go. <clears throat> and now we can put our motor plate back on. Logo facing out. I mean it's self-explanatory. It can only go in one way but still. Save yourself from fighting it. Go ahead and tighten these bolts back down. There we go. Make sure they're snug. I don't want to over tighten but you do want to make sure everything's snug. And now we can take that little itty bitty pin which I'm going to pop around all over the place here. And we'll put it in. Be careful because it's a really tight fit. There you go. Make sure it's centered. And then we can take the back part of our slipper clutch. Drop it down on there. And you see it won't go on all the way. What that means is the pin isn't centered. So we'll slide it up and we'll just tap the pin just a little bit. I should be able to... This thing fights me. We pushed it way too far. That looks good. It's sad you have to be that tedious, but that's how it is. Try to line that up. There you go. Now it's on. That's how it should look when it's on, nice and flush. And now we can go ahead and put our front slipper pad and spur gear and you can see the little washer here just be careful not to lose that slip that down on and what I like to do is take my two fingers and hold just like this and I'll take the nut and the spring put them back on hand tighten them down and take a wrench and go ahead and tighten it down and a lot of people what is my setting how tight should my slipper be my thoughts are on a crawler it should be all the way down everything else is locked your axles are locked your differentials are locked i know this is the point where it's supposed to break but you know what parts are so cheap when you're in a bind and you're trying to crawl you want all the power to be delivered to the ground you don't want this to slip so i recommend tightening all the way down that's just me you do what you want but there you go how to clean how to disassemble clean grease lube and reassemble your SCX10, Axial, Wraith, all those different cars, AX10, um, whatever has this in it, transmission. So stay tuned for more. Um, in the next episode, we just did, we just finished the transmission. We're going to rebuild the shocks. Go ahead and uh, re-oil them, clean them, and see if we can't get the skid mounted and start uh, making this thing look like a car. So subscribe, guys, and stay tuned.